Okay guys, I think we're gonna get started. I think we're still missing one or two dogs, but um, they'll kind of minger in. So, rule of thumb is if you're late, you either get to tell a song or sing a song or tell a joke. So, if you're late, you gotta be thinking of what joke you're gonna tell next week. All right, so we're gonna do a little introduction here. My name's Jason, for those who do not know me, of course. Uh, this is my friend Jill. Jill's gonna be helping us in the next four weeks. And this is my friend Diana. She's also gonna be helping us in the next four weeks. So if there's a time where I am working with somebody or uh, you come in early or leave early, not leave early, you come in and uh, you need some help or you need to ask some questions, I'm with somebody, or there's a time you just don't understand, you can grab one of these guys, and if they don't know the answer, they'll find out and they'll get the answer from me, okay? So a couple couple rules of thumb. We're gonna, I'm gonna move you down just a little bit if I can, and I'm gonna move you down it's just a little bit. It, okay, well, they'll just have to come in. There you go, I, yep, thank you. Why don't you just grab your chair and move down just a little bit. So, the first, the first rule of thumb. A lot of people call me up and say, Jason, I want to come to a basic obedience class so I can socialize so I can socialize my dog. The fact of life is your dogs are socializing right now. They don't need to go up to another dog. They don't need to play with another dog to socialize. So when you guys come in each week, um, I really want to encourage you not to let your dog go up to another dog, sniff another dog. Um, the first, you know, especially with puppies, like this puppy here, the first two years of this puppy's life is so crucial. So if this puppy comes in and has a bad experience with another dog, it can really affect it its entire life, okay? So if you come in and you're thinking, oh man, I want to let my dog socialize with this puppy over here, and all of a sudden for some reason those two dogs don't get along, guess what happens? Now that puppy has a bad experience. Now he says, man, every dog that I experience or every dog I come up to, I don't know, is it gonna cause a bad experience? Am I gonna be scared of it? And a lot of times we, what we call is fear aggression, where the dog says, I just wanna go after you and eat you because I'm really worried about you, okay? So safety is really first when we're in a group class. Um, second rule of thumb, if you uh, have a male dog and your dog says, hey, you know what, usually when I go into buildings with other dogs, I need to relieve myself, I'd really encourage you to try to encourage your dog to uh, go potty before it comes in. There's a little space between here and the next building over, please take your dog. and. Uh, if you need bags, we have bags. If not, then you don't need a bag. Uh, if you guys need to use a restroom, right back where the vacuum is, right around the corner, right where the young man with the pit bull is, there's a bathroom back there. Um, the toilet does require a dollar bill. I'm just joking. So, one thing you will learn about me is I have a horrible sense of humor. And I use humor for a couple different ways. One, you guys are really nervous right now. If you don't realize it or not, you're really nervous. The more I can help you guys relax, the more you guys are gonna get more out of your experience here. The second rule is, your dogs are already trained. Do you believe it? You're probably thinking, wait a minute, I come here for training. Ask yourself this, do you really have to teach your dog how to put his butt down? Do you really have to teach the dog how to lay down? Not at all, how does your dog sleep? It lays down to sleep, right? Dog training is really about simple communication, okay? We're gonna talk a lot about communication tonight. So, right behind Jill here is a board. Each week, we're, our goal is to cover two to three new behaviors. So what a lot of people do, and I just encourage you to do this, is uh, maybe take your phones out when you leave, take a photo of the board so you know what we're gonna work on each week. That way, if you come in and you miss a week or you need to make up a week, you can say, hey, Jason, I wasn't here last week. What do I need to do? These are the things that you guys worked on and we can kind of be on the same page, okay? Next, your dogs are not gonna learn anything in four weeks, okay? If you think your dog is gonna be trained in four weeks, I'll refund your money right now. Dog training takes weeks, months, sometimes years. It does not happen overnight. If you want instant success, it doesn't happen, okay? Dog training is no different than working out. I used to go to the gym right down the road here uh, a couple times a week, and I always notice the same people, right? But come January 1st, what does everybody do? They go run and they sign up for the gym, right? Because we think if we get a membership, voila, we're gonna lose 20 pounds or we're gonna get in shape. It doesn't work like that. What do we do? We have to put the work in. We have to build muscle memory, no different than if we build physical memory, okay? So, I am here to teach you guys the knowledge. I know we probably talked about this on the phone, most of us. I want you guys to be able to learn the information, take it home and apply it on a weekly basis. So when your dogs are here, don't get frustrated and say, oh, my dog sucked in class tonight. Oh, I such embarrassment. He didn't do what Jason said. It doesn't matter. I want you guys to be able to, to apply the information. Yes, we're gonna work with your dogs in class so I can see how you guys do things. If I can tweak it a little bit and teach you guys with your dogs, yes. 
but I really want you guys to really obtain the information and apply it on a weekly basis, okay? Uh, second of all, I love questions. There are no stupid questions. I've been doing this for about, I'm gonna not gonna tell you, about 25 years, um, give or take a couple. A lot of times when I work with new people, I always have to remind myself that you guys are still in this infant stage where you guys, your minds are just not um, understanding a lot of what I'm saying out. So a lot of things, a lot of times I use analogies uh, for a couple different reasons. One, it helps me communicate with you guys better. Two, if I brought my dog in here and showed you with my own dog, it wouldn't make any sense. Why? One, because my dog is a seasoned dog and it would just do everything anyways and it wouldn't show you how to start with a puppy. Um, and two, when I work with my dog, nothing else matters. My brain is totally focused on my dog. So it wouldn't be fair to you guys, okay? So remember, ask questions. I really like questions. Uh, let's see, a couple other things we're gonna cover. Did anybody not receive an email from me? Did anybody not receive an email from me? Okay, we're good. So in my email, did you, what stood out about my email more than probably anything else? Any idea? What stood out? What, what really topic I really tried to cover? Yes. Oh, I don't know if this is right or not, but to me, I felt like the food stood out, like how much food. You got it. Okay. So a lot of times people come to me and say, Jason, what kind of dog trainer are you? There's all different kinds of dog trainers, all different kind of methodology. My methodology is based on engagement and positive reinforcement. Okay. I, I pick on the man quite a bit. I don't know him personally, and I'm only using him as an example of contrast. But if you guys ever watched Cesar Milan, okay. So Cesar Milan's methodology is not based on positive reinforcement. P Cesar Milan's methodology is based on negative reinforcement and a lot of compulsion-based training. In other words, um, if you watch a couple of his episodes, usually he does not use food, toys, any kind of motivational tools. So people come to me a lot of times, they say, Jason, I don't want to have to use hot dogs because one, hot dogs are, uh, are bad for my dog. I don't want to give my dog people food, okay? First of all, hot dogs are not people food. That's the first thing we'll cover, okay? <laughs> we shouldn't even be eating them, okay? But, uh, but they say, well, why can't I bring my normal kibble or why can't I bring like store-bought treats? The treats we use can dictate how well your dog does, okay? For a couple different reasons. One, we are in a hectic environment for your dog. This is an environment that there's a lot of smells going on. Um, a lot of times I describe uh, smells as a newspaper to a dog, like the New York Times. If you ever looked at a New York Times, it has tons and tons of articles. There's so much that you can get kind of lost in it, right? So the ground right now and everything around your dog is like the New York Times. There's so many smells, there's so much going on. We have to bring the dog back to want to be with and work with us. So a lot of times I describe this as a pendulum. So the pendulum swing all the way to the right now because your dogs are so engaged with everything else that's going on, we want to bring the dogs back to us, okay? It's, it's much like, if you guys remember when you're in school, why, what did the teacher always tell you when you were looking out the window? Uh, eyes first, right? Eyes, uh, pay attention, right? Because the teacher realized that the more the mind is focused on her, the more your mind is focused on the lesson, the more you're going to gain knowledge. So that's the first reason why we want to use a high value food. You don't have to use hot dogs. You don't have to use cheese. What I do want you to encourage you to do is be inventive. Find a high value that you know your dog is going to like. Usually store-bought treats are designed for you. And I know you're thinking, wait a minute, designed for me. So I, I have about three different businesses. So marketing is really important to me. So when you go down the pet food aisle and the treat aisle and you're walking down the aisle, what are you bombarded by when you look at all the treats? Any idea? Brands. Brands, names, clever advertising, right? You see bacon, you see a cartoon dog on the front, right? Your dog never looks at those, so man, those look really yummy, right? They're marketed for you. That does not mean that they're gonna be good for dog training. So when you're thinking about what kind of food you use, yes, I gave you some suggestions, but when you're thinking about what kind of food you wanna use, use something that's soft, malleable, something that the dog chews two or three times, less than that if possible, and says, I wanna do that again. Here's a little analogy. If you wanna teach your dog how to down or sit, if you can do 10 repetitions in a one minute time frame or two minute time frame, the contrast to that, if you did 10 repetition and 10 minute time frame, 
Which one do you think is going to teach your dog faster than muscle memory? Sure. So if we can do 10 reps in two minutes, your dog is going to learn the behavior way quicker. If we do 10 reps in 10 minutes, your dog is going to be slower in learning the behavior. So if you give your dog a treat for sitting and your dog takes five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds to chew it up, pick up all the crumbs off the ground, now what happens to our learning curve? Okay, but if your dog chews it once and says, oh, I want to do that again, now what happens to our learning curve? Now the dog says, man, I can learn this quicker. So the more reps you can do in a short amount of time, the quicker your dog is going to get the muscle memory. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, you don't have to use hot dogs and cheese, but you do need to find something high value. The other thing is, I think I encourage on the email, like I haven't looked at it for a little while, is about feeding your dog before you come to training. So this can be a, um, a kind of touchy subject with people. A lot of times I tell people, don't feed your dog the morning you come. They're like, oh my gosh, my dog is going to starve. Okay? I guarantee your dog's not going to starve. If you are worried about your dog starving to death, then feed them just a little bit less in the morning. And then when you come to training, come to training, they'll be a little more exuberant, want to work harder. And then feed them maybe a little bit more at night if you're really worried about it. However, your dog is not going to starve to death if you skip one meal. So a lot of times I just uh, describe it as this. And people say, well, why, why skip a meal? Well, if your dog just ate a big meal, let's say you fed your dog at five o'clock and you come here, it's equivalent of you eating a huge steak, potato and vegetable dinner and then go running 10 miles. How eager would you be to run 10 miles, right? Okay, think about it this from a natural point of view. If a wolf wakes, wakes up in the morning, walks out his den and there is a dead deer and that happens for six months, what happens to the wolf's mentality about hunting? Yeah, kind of goes downhill because the food is always available. No, the wolf wakes up in the morning and says, I'm hungry. My hunger drives me to learn. Okay, my hunger teaches me to how to catch my prey, how to hunt my prey. And depravity, if the wolf misses, their, misses a meal because they did something wrong, the wolf says, hey, I learned a lesson from that. So if you want to get more out of your training, Cut maybe back your food a little bit. Don't feed your dog a little bit in the morning, a little bit less in the morning. You'll get way more out of your training. Okay? I do so much with food that I offset my meals with my dog. So let's say I'm getting ready for a trial and I'm using a ton of bait. Sometimes I won't even feed my dog in the morning. He'll just get fed at night. Sometimes the dog, vice versa. If I'm getting up early and going training, sometimes I won't feed my dog early uh, his breakfast, but he does get a meal at night. So I'm always manipulating that. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay, um, most of your guys' I think collars is good. Um, a couple things that I, I kind of helped this young man, the Golden Retriever. I'm not a big flexi leash fan. Um, they're a little bit dangerous, I think, uh, in dog training or in general. Um, I think most of you guys are okay on equipment. Uh, I would probably suggest, like, I'm gonna, can I pick on your mom for a minute? Your mom has a, you're, you have a really big training bag. Okay, so, oh, yeah. so. A, <laughs> A big training bag becomes a huge lure to the dog. Pretty soon the dog says, hey, I'm not gonna offer the, tra in the correct training unless I see that big shopping cart, okay? So I'd probably maybe encourage you to get something a little bit smaller, okay? All right, let's see, anything else I need to cover before we jump into it? All right, I think, I think I'll jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is engagement. So any idea what the word engagement means or engagement in dog training? What, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Just throw it out. Heads in the game, okay. Give them focus on you, okay. Anything else kind of mind? So I consider engagement as a frame of mind, okay. So I think we kind of talked about this a minute ago. If you're looking outside the window in this class and your teacher says eyes forward, do she knows? Yeah, right. So one of the things that I, one of the analogies I use quite a bit is if we were to take a ten-year-old to Disneyland and ask him to do a math test in the middle of Disneyland, what's the chance of him doing the math test? Zero is slim, right? Okay. However, what if we took that same child and we went to the child and said, okay, I'm going to give you $100 of tickets and all you got to do is three math problems. Now what's the chance of him doing the math? Okay. So all we did is change the way the brain works. Dog training is much the same way. Right now, if you ask your dog to do something, the chance of them doing it is probably slim to almost zero. The reason being is they are in a new environment. Maybe they don't even know the muscle memory yet, 
or maybe they're just hey they're checking out the dog next door to them say hey, you're more in, you're more enjoyable than my mom so 90 percent of training is engagement if you want a really good training schedule with your dog do way more than engagement okay i use my friend jill here i'm gonna give you guys a little example then we're gonna try it with your dogs so i'm gonna give you a little preview here i'm jill's dog right she brings me to the park Jill has never done this before, so, yeah. so you're gonna have to give her a little bit. <laughs> so she brings me to the park and I'm I'm checking out this golden retriever here. Hey, how you doing? And she asks me to sit. Ask me to sit, Jill. Sit. Oh hey mom, I hear you. Hey, how you doing? She she asked me to sit again. Sit. Yeah. Okay. Now, am I choosing not to to do it or do I not hear her? Choosing. I'm choosing not to do it. Why? Because my brain is somewhere else, right? Okay, but what if she comes up to me? And I'm checking out this golden retriever, and she shows me the high-value food. Puts it right in front of my nose. Oh, hey, hey, what you, hey, what you got? Oh, man, I, ooh, I really like this. And she just starts feeding me. Walk back, walk backwards. She just starts feeding me. All right, hey, I kind of like this, right? It's kind of like this. If your boss came up to you tomorrow and started to lay hundred-dollar bills on your desk, what would your brain do? Take the hundred. Your brain would do two things. One. It would say, what did I do to, in order to gain the reward? And two, I want to do it again, right? Okay. The dog is the same way. The dog is like, hey, man, I don't know what it is, but I don't want to take a chance of missing it. And everything else becomes a null point. He actually thinks now, I'm throwing. Now if, she, now if she asks me to, now if she asks me to sit, what's my chance of sitting? Pretty good. Way higher, especially if I know the muscle memory, for the, or the muscle memory is really anchored, right? So... Engagement is 90% of your obedience. It's easy to teach your dog how to sit down, come, all the mechanics. Engagement's really where it comes from, okay? So, I'm gonna use, can you use you as an example real quick? Okay. All right, what do you got for bait today, mom? I have hot dogs and cheese. Awesome. <laughs> so, I am really bad with names, okay. so a lot of times I call you guys mom and dad. You're not my mom and dad, of course, but you're your dog's mom and dad. So if I say mom and dad, you know who I'm referring to, okay? Now, there's a reason why I chose a lab. Labs love to eat. They're really easy to train because why? They love to eat. Okay, so pull out a, hot, a handful of food. Whoa. <laughs> now, let, we're going to do a little distraction here. Don't feed him yet. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to try to be his friend. Okay? We're going to watch what happens in a month. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, hello, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, yeah, I love you too. Okay. So, I was able to lure him away pretty easy, right? Okay, watch what mom's going to do. Mom, feed him a little bit. What's the name? Good. Feed him another one. Feed him another one. Good. Feed him another one. Good. Feed him another one. Okay, now let's watch something. Kitty, 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 kitty. Okay, don't feed him yet. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, feed him. So, what choice did he just make there? The yeah, he's like, screw this guy. I can't fall for that again. Kitty, 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 kitty. Good. And all she did is feed the dog a high value in a repetitious way, right? And it, it, it just feeding the dog. So, can we say now the dog is thoroughly engaged with mom? more than me, right? 90% of our obedience is already there just because she is high value and she fed the dog. However, it's not about just sitting here and feeding the dog. Engagement is a frame of mind. So if she just sits here and feeds the dog all day long, the dog is gonna get full and bored of that, okay? So I want her, she's gonna make a little bit of a game with the food. Here, pull out a handful of food, please. Okay, still got some in here. Yep, okay. So I want you to move away from your dog, encourage her to follow you, if him to follow you, and when he does, I want you to feed him. Back up a little bit, and back up and keep feeding. Good, feed, good. I'm gonna show you a little trick. You guys, watch this. Turn your hand over. Turn my hand over. Completely over. Watch your dog, please. Wait, where are you? <laughs> it's okay. Here, Jill, do me a favor. Hold the dog for a minute. Can Jill hold your dog, please? Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to keep your fingers, especially with this dog. Yeah, okay. it's a little bit mouthy. Put, put your uh, one piece of food in your um, left hand. Or right, doesn't matter, okay? Open your fingers all the way. Take your thumb and put it on top of the treat. Yep, keep your fingers all together. Okay, okay bring the uh, food up a little bit higher. Like up in the, you want the muscle of your thumb. Okay. Okay. 
Now, take your hand and push it into his nose and feed him. Good, but don't turn your hand over that way. Um, palm up. Palm up. Yep, feed him. Was that easier? Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's no different than feeding a uh, horse an apple. If you feed a horse an apple with your fingers, you're gonna lose your fingers, right? You feed it with an open palm. Uh, plus, there's another way that also she can teach the dog how to take food gently. I'll teach you that later, okay? Okay, so. First step we're gonna work on is engagement. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have break you guys up into two little groups. Since you did this already, I'm gonna have you stay there. So I'm gonna have the Roddy, the Golden Retriever, and the little puppy. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to stand up, pull a little handful of food, and I want you to, to get your dog to follow the food a little bit, feed them a little bit with the food, almost turn this into the game. Like they're kind of they're kind of chasing your hand. They're kind of, you can talk to them, you can say their name. I don't care what you do. Did you, did you not bring any food? Okay, I'll oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, so don't just sit there and feed them. I want you to lead them around a little bit. See if you can follow your hand. Almost make this like a game. Like, there you go. Now wait a minute, so what, what's he more focused on right now? There you go. So you gotta feed him a little bit more. Good, feed him another one. There you go, feed him another one. Good, try to turn your palm over so your palm is facing the dog. I'm gonna have you sit down for a minute. Thank you. There you go, okay, reload, try that again. There you go. She should be a natural at this. Yep, you got it. Okay, when you guys are ready to sit back down, I'm gonna have you guys do this. Okay. Do what again? You need a pair of scissors. I don't think I have a pair. Let me see if I can get one for you, okay? I'll be right there, okay? Diane, do you have a knife in your car? Do you have a knife in your car? I think no. Okay. Can um, the young lady with the brindle needs it? Oh, he's got one. Here, he's got. He's got one. Do you want to help her out, please? Oh, he says I'm gonna like this. Good. So, see, you're going to the dog and feeding. Let's try to get the dog to follow you a little bit. You might have to talk to him a little bit. Be a little bit. Issue with his leash, but... Good. If you want, hey, if. No, yeah. I like the leash actually. We're, we're, we're probably gonna buy it for a Okay, if you want to trade it out, you're welcome to. Okay, you don't. You're not. Obviously, he's in control and you're in control, so I'm perfectly fine with it. There you go. Do me a favor. Have a have about three or four in your hand. Easy. It's okay. Have about three or four in your hand and, and feed while you walk backwards. Okay. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk backwards. Come on. Come on. Hey, right here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go back over there, okay? He's a little reactive with the dog and I wanna make sure everybody's safe. Yeah. What, what? I understand, that's, that's, I understand. Totally understand, totally understand. There you go, good job, good start. How's she doing, is she eating? Not really. There you go, there you go. Okay, good job, when you guys are ready, why don't you sit back down? Oh, hold, hold your dog, hold, thank you. Good job, okay. All right, so now that we covered a little bit about engagement, now we're gonna talk about how we use that engagement to our advantage. <laughs> Who here has taught their dog how to down? Somewhat, okay, a little bit. Who is here to taught their dog how to down without sitting first? Awesome, all right, you're ahead of the game. Can anybody tell me why, and you're welcome to answer this, can anybody tell me why it's faulty to teach your dog to sit and then down? No. <laughs> it's okay. 
Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. A little bit worried. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> if we need to put up a barrier, we can put up a barrier. Okay. Okay. So, can anybody tell me why it's faulty? Do it. Um, yeah. Do you mind if we put a wall between? I totally understand. Let's use that one's fine. I'm just gonna put a little seat. Okay. So, a lot of people teach their dog to sit. Um, Jill, Jill, sit it right between. No, nope, right here, Jill. Right here. Okay, that's fine. Um, a lot of people teach their dog to sit and then down first. The reason being is you haven't been taught the mechanics of teaching your dog how to down correctly. So in our mind, it makes sense. If we divide the dog in half, get half the dog down, then we can get the rest of the dog down, right? However, it confuses the muscle memory. What happens is when you tell the dog to down after a while, the dog just sits there and looks at you and says, oh, I did it correctly. So I'm gonna teach you how to teach your dog how to down correctly. Um, I'm gonna use the puppy, is that okay? Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to do this with a puppy. Who wants to do it, mom or dad? Uh, I'll do it. Yeah, All right. <laughs> dad, I'm actually gonna have you hold the leash for her so she doesn't have to worry about holding the leash. <laughs> Okay, so do me a fair feet a little bit. Let's make sure she's engaged. All right, she's a lab. She's always engaged. Yeah. Do me a fair. Can you sit all the way on your bum for me? me sit down? Yep, sit all the way on your bum. Put your legs straight out. Okay, bend your knees up a little bit. Okay, take food and put it in your left hand. Put your left hand all the way underneath your legs. Underneath them? Yep, all the way underneath your legs. Show, a lot of food underneath just a one, two pieces. Show them the food. <laughs> oh, <there's stuff. laughs> I know where she is. Yeah, exactly. There, oh, well. There's there you go. Now bring your hand slowly underneath your legs and bring it down. Keep it right there and stop. And wait. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, so she just taught her dog that eight plus eight equals 24. Do you know why? Because the dog's butt was up in the air and she fed the dog, right? So you want to make sure when you do this, because I'm glad you're a guinea pig. You want to make sure when you do this, you do not feed for the incorrect behavior. So, she's going to try it again, but she's not going to actually reward the dog until the dog's body's all the way down. The other, the other thing she did, she did is she kept moving her hand. Oh. So, let's try this again. And when I tell you, just completely stop your hand, okay? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, yep, and stop your hand. Don't move it, don't move it. Oh, wait. wait yep, wait, wait, wait. And feed. There you okay. go. Good job. All right, try it one more time. Okay. Yeah, you can go from either side. So oh, okay. it doesn't, it, oh, it's, doesn't it's not proprietary. Oh, sorry. It's, a, okay. it's not proprietary to one side. And stop. Good job. Okay. Good job. Okay, go and sit back down. We're gonna talk for a minute. So, can anybody tell me why I I was not telling her to tell her dog to down? This gets a little bit confusing, but I'll try to explain it. Any idea why I was not telling her to tell her dog to down? Why we didn't give a down marker? So, just for reference, a marker is a command. So, if I say give your dog a marker, you're it, to you it's gonna be in a command. Okay. So, any idea why? Oh, you give your mom a high five. That was awesome. So mom is right on. So I know this is kind of be backwards thinking, but we always teach the muscle memory before the behavior. So let's say the very first time she was luring the dog underneath her legs. If she said down, 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 and then she fed the dog inadvertently like she did with the dog's butt up in the air, what is she inadvertently telling her dog down means? She's actually teaching her dog how to bow instead of downing. So before you put a command or a marker to a behavior, make sure the dog can do the behavior consistently before you put the marker to it. Does that make sense? Okay. Another example would be if you ask your dog to sit and you want your dog to sit really fast, right? And you lure your dog and it sits kind of slow. If you kept telling the dog to sit, it sat slow and you rewarded the dog for that, what are you telling the dog it's okay to do? It says slow, right? However, if you don't put a marker to it, you get the dog to start offering the correct muscle memory, 
before you put the marker to it, when you say sit, the dog's gonna pop his butt down really quick because the dog has learned, oh, I only sit, I only get rewarded when I sit quick. Does that make sense? Okay, so most of you guys have big, actually all you guys have big dogs. If you have a small dog, these people are young, so they can kind of be limber. But if you have a dog that, uh, and you can't get on the ground with them, a lot of times you can use like a chair, like a broomstick. It's, it's, the legs are not the key here. The key is to get your dog to drop down to go underneath, okay? So here's what I want to try to do. I want you to do three or four of those and then sit back down, okay? And you can do them right in the spot where you're at. If your dog is kind of distracted by everybody, maybe do a little engagement, make sure your dog is ready to learn, and then we can go from there. Jill, do me a favor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna block you in just a little bit right here. If that's, can I put a, we're gonna put a wall right here, is that okay? Just because this dog is a little bit reactive, is that okay? All right. Have you done down with him yet? Yeah, he Okay. He's not great at it, but he's Okay, let's see. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Right about. Right about. Yeah. All right. So I would really. So I would definitely probably really encourage you to reteach this a little bit with the I would encourage you to reteach this a little bit with the food uh -huh. and you'll get a much better response. He really likes to work for you. So I'd really encourage it the way these guys are doing it. Here, so put your hand underneath, feed her a little bit. Like just for just feed her, just for just for dropping her head. There you go. Here, and drop one right on the ground, right there. Then drop another one right outside of her reach. Like, almost put a little trail of them and watch what happens, okay? Good start. Good start. Keep an eye on the Uh-oh. <laughs> now you're tangled up. Or a white gift. You know what? Good job. So next time, completely stop your hand. Once, once your hand is about where it was right there, just stop it. Don't move it anymore. Even close your. You can even close the food off. Like close your hand so the dog can't get it. Okay, don't move your hand. Close it. Wait, wait, wait. Now feed her. Good. So once her body completely drops correctly, then feed her. Okay. All right. Good job. Good start. Did it fall off? No, he's freaking out about it. It's not helping me at all. Okay, I just totally understand. He might be That's good sit. How about the slip collar that you have? Because this one has a, a plastic buckle, and he's a pretty strong dog. He's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere? Okay. Like that. Thank you. How'd she do? You did? All right, good job. So what are you actually Here, hold on. Uh, to, to down? To down. Okay, so do you see the dog well, still? He, he just did that because I haven't given him treats yet. Gotcha. Here, let's see you do it. Let's try this again. Okay, stop. Don't move your hand. Don't move your hand. Now feed. Good. So once you can do this like maybe 20, 30 times in a row, he does it really quick, then you can start putting a command to it. Okay? How'd he do? I'm all right. I'm not as much. Okay, so you're gonna be up your too high. Yeah, well, I got him down because he couldn't get underneath my legs. Yeah, okay. Um, want to do me a favor? She did it. Yeah. Here, can you go back there by the restroom and there's a yellow and black bar? Can you grab that for me? It's a you see a long bar over there. Grab that, please. I'll show you a little trick. Yeah. I'm not very going It's okay. Yeah. Yep, one of those. Yep. Wait till you get my age. Okay, you're gonna hold one end and your sister is gonna hold another end. Okay. 
Mom, you're gonna step. Okay, hold that down a little bit right there. Okay, Mom, you're gonna step over it. Your food is gonna go underneath it. Nope, you're gonna step over on this side. There you go. Okay. You're gonna put your hand all the way underneath. There you go. And keep it really. There you go. Slowly breathe and stop. Good and feed. Excellent. Good job. All right. Let's try it one more time again. Can you guys bring the bar a little bit lower? And mom, when I tell you to stop your hand, I want you to stop your hand, okay? Okay, keep moving and stop. Don't move. Don't, oh, a little bit further. And stop, don't move. Now feed. Good job. So the moment the dog offers you the correct behavior, boom, you pay it. Then the dog's gonna say, oh, you want my body to do this. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and sit back down when you guys are ready. How did she do? Do we need to use the bar? <laughs> did you do good? Yeah. All right, good job. Yep, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay. So you guys did really well. I think it was the first class that everybody, everybody had success on this. So, I know it's hard not to say when we put the command to it, but like this young man asked, he's like, like, when can I tell my dog to down? When your dog drops down within seconds of your hand going down, and you know that the dog is understanding, or in dog training we call it, when it's really anchored, then you can start putting a marker word to it. But you don't want to put a marker word to it too soon. Remember, the marker word has nothing to do with the dog. If I could walk up to this lab here and talk to the dog in German, and it's not gonna know any better if I walk up to talk to the dog in English, okay? It's just not gonna know. We have to teach the dog the muscle memory. If we don't teach the dog the muscle memory, then we have to use fear methodology. In other words, we push the dog down. So a lot of people say, well, why, when the dog's halfway down, why can't I push the dog down or make the dog do it? So I would really, really encourage you not to ever physically try to manip manipulate your dog. What happens is the dog actually fights against it. And if you want to do a little test, you're welcome to do this. Watch what happens when you try to push on your dog to make him sit. The dog actually pushes against you, okay? This is why we lure, this is why we use food. We teach the muscle memory. So don't get impatient, say, oh, my dog's not dropping their butt down right away. I'm gonna help them and, and slam them down. If you do that, it's like every time I say sit, I punch Jill. After the fourth time I say sit, what is she gonna do? No, she's gonna duck, right? Okay, and then is she really gonna like the word sit? Or is she gonna fear the word sit? Same idea, okay? So there's another concept we're gonna talk about before we work on sit. We're gonna talk about the F word. This is the F word I want you to use, not the F word you're probably thinking about right now. So in dog training we have different releases. We have, it's basically called a terminal release from a behavior. So in dog training, everything has a beginning and an end. The moment I ask my dog to do something, it's a beginning of the behavior. But there has to be an end to the behavior. If there's not an end to the behavior, then the dog is gonna choose when to end the behavior. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, can I ask your daughter some questions? Sure. Uh, did your mom ever put you in timeout when you were younger? Okay, did, did you, did she give you a time limit or did you know you had to stay there until she told you it's okay to get up? Well, it really depended on what we got in the store. <laughs> ah, you got in trouble for a lot. Most of the time you knew you had to stay there until she told you it's okay to get up, right? Okay, so mom didn't always have to tell her daughter, stay there, no, 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 you stay there, no, you stay there. Because of the belief system that mom instilled when the, when the children were younger, the children knew I needed to stay, not children anymore, but when they were children, they, they learned I had to stay here until mom told me it was okay to get up. Your dog is much the same way. This is a belief system that you start installing it at this age, at this, at this time in your training, that everything has a beginning and an end. This will make more sense when we work on the stay. I actually don't use a stay marker at all. I don't use a stay command at all. I teach my dog to sit until I either tell him free, a release from the behavior, or 
I tell the dog as secondary behavior, okay? Here's an example. Jill, come here, please. Are you gonna punch? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna punch you. So, Jill's gonna ask me to sit. Sit. Okay? Now, if Jill moves back right now, what am I gonna do? I'm probably gonna follow her, right? Okay? So, she's gonna teach me from puppyhood, or your dog's now, okay? She's gonna teach me that she asked me to sit. Sit. I'm gonna stay sitting until she frees me. There's a couple different ways to free your dog, okay? A common way we use a lot of times in beginning stages is we take a piece of food, we say free, and we kind of toss it to the side. Free. All right, and the dog goes, picks it up, sniffs around. Now the dog understands, okay, I'm disengaging from mom. I'm now not training anymore, okay? The other thing Jill can do is she can have, she can ask me to sit. Sit. She can have food in her hand and she can say free and kind of lead, the, like, lead me forward and kind of feed the dog, pat me a little bit at the same time and then answer a cell phone. So here's a really good example. My dogs have learned a, quickly, a quick bad behavior uh, years ago. So I work at home, uh, I'm a logistics broker for a living and uh, I noticed every time I was working with my dog when my phone rang, the moment the phone rang, my dog would get up. Okay, and the reason being my dog broke behavior is because the dog learned that as soon as the phone rang, I disengaged from them and I started to pay attention to something else, right? So then the dog says, oh, hey, when, dad disengage, or when the phone rings, dad disengages, so therefore I can disengage. And then the dog learned on their own that the phone meant they can do whatever they want, right? So I had to go back and retrain my dog a little bit, set the dog up that just because the phone rang does not mean it's a release from behavior. Okay, am I, am I, are you guys doing okay on this? Any questions so far on the release? So the release is really important. If you ask your dog to do something, they should continually do it until you release them or tell them it's okay. Same thing with these young ladies. When they were younger, they knew they had to stay on the couch until mom told them it was okay to get up. If they got up, then there's probably a consequence, okay? All right, let's talk about the sit behavior. Who here has taught their dog to sit? Okay, pretty much everybody. So sit is pretty easy, right? There's, some, there's simple mechanics. The dog learns, hey, if there's food above my head, my butt goes down, I get rewarded. There's a couple things in sit that we're gonna work on. Jill, can I use you again? So one of the things I see a lot of people doing is this. When they ask the dog to sit, they take the treat and they go right over the dog's head. Right over the dog's head. So what am I gonna do when she does this? I'm gonna back up and then I'm gonna sit back here. And if she feeds, from, feeds me for that, what is she teaching me sit means? Back up and back up. I back up and I sit, right? Okay. Plus one of the things that happens is that we don't lure the dog. The dog, maybe we lure the dog once or twice when they're younger and then we just expect the dog to do it. And anytime we get away from teaching that muscle memory, the dog starts doing sit slowly. So let's say she asked me to sit. sit. And I just kind of walk back and I kind of sit and it takes me like 20 seconds to sit. And then she feeds me. Is there any reason why I should ever do it quickly? Nope. If I get rewarded for doing it slowly, I'm always going to do it slowly. So I'm going to teach you guys how to hopefully teach your dog how to sit. One, closer to you and two, a little bit quicker. Okay. So what Jill's going to do is Jill, Jill's going to have food in both hands. Okay. Both of her hands are going to be right in front of her, right down to her, about to her belly both hands together, okay? She's gonna feed me and walk backwards a little bit. She's gonna feed, 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 and then when she's ready to feed, she's gonna stop moving her hands. I'm gonna come to her hands and she's gonna slide her hands up her body, slowly up her body, okay? And the moment my butt goes down, she's gonna reward me. However, Jill kind of messed up. Come back here again, please, Jill. Actually, you know what I want, so everybody can see you. Stand this way, please. So, Jill, where did you bring your hands that time? Stop, stop. Okay, so if Jill brought her hands up there and she has this little puppy here, what's the puppy, where's the puppy gonna sit? Probably a little ways back, right? The puppy's naturally gonna rock back here. So what Jill's gonna do is, depending on the height of the dog, Jill's gonna bring her hands down way lower. She's gonna slide them up her body and stop. The, the hands never leave the dog's nose. This is the key to getting your dog to sit, one, quickly, and two, closer to you. The hands never leave the dog's nose. Think of the nose like the joystick on my wheelchair. If I push the joystick right, the chair goes right. If I push the joystick left, it goes left, right? If we bring the nose up, what happens to the butt? The butt naturally goes down, okay? Um, can, I, can you be a quick demo for me? 
All right, let's see if we can do this with this dog and then I'm gonna have you guys do this with your dog. And you guys are also gonna implement a little free. Okay, um, can, can, Jill hold her can Jill hold her leash please? All right. Okay, so can we agree, go to the end of the leash please, just there we go. Can we agree the dog is engaged right now? Yeah, yeah. right now mom means everything to the dog. So what, what mom's gonna do is, is she's gonna, do me for back up that way a little bit so you can give yourself a little space. There you go. No, I want you you to back up. Yeah, no, you need to back your bum towards that way. There you go. Okay, so what she's gonna do is she's gonna keep her hands really low for a minute. Keep your hands low, mom. Okay, I want you to feed and walk back. Walk back, there you go. Now when I tell you, I want you to bring your hands close to your body and slowly slide them up your body, okay? Both your hands right close to your body. And try it again. Okay, bring your hand down a little bit lower, both hands right there. Now walk backwards, don't move them, don't move them. Now slide them up your body. Stop. Yep, just like that, but I want you to come to a stop and then slide them up, okay? Oh, good, so her dog naturally kind of sat back there, right? Because the dog's been paid for that, just like mom just did. Okay, let's try it again. Bring your hands down really low right from her nose. Walk backwards, slow, slow, slow. Now stop and slide them slowly up your body. Good, that's a little better. Feed. Watch this. Don't bring your hand away from your body to feed her. Bring your hands down low. Even when she sits, get her to come to your hands. Watch, bring down low. Okay, he's right there. Now always feed her really close to your body and then she'll start getting the muscle memory for getting close. But if you feed her away from your body, she's always gonna move away from your body. Does that kind of make sense? Give you guys a little demo? Okay, um, now watch what she does on the free. Do me for ask her, when you're ready, ask her to sit again. Okay, good. Now I want you to take the food in your hand and I want you to kind of lead her backwards and say free and just feed her, okay? Free. Good, and feed her, good. So now she released the dog. The dog was in a sit. Then she fed the dog, herself free, and the dog says, hey. Now the dog offered another sit again, which is fine. All right, let's have you guys do that. So go ahead and stand up. Make sure your dog's a little bit engaged with you, ready to work, if the dog is. Let's see if you can get your dog to sit really close to you. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, both hands right in front of you, right? We're almost to a zipper, there you go. And <laughs> slide the slow. Oh, okay. So what are you using for food, buddy? Uh, chicken gravy. Yeah, I'd probably use something next, different next week, okay? okay. That's, that's, it's one that's really hard and he's really not that engaged with it. Okay. Yeah, he likes to stop. Good job. Can you have to come down here just a little bit, please? Good job. Awesome, hey, way to go. I probably would use something a little bit different next week also. I, he takes some three, four chews to get through it, okay? But she is liking it. Of course, she's a part pit bull and she'll eat anything. Good job. Good try, all right. Okay, let's try that again, Mom. I want you to start with the food right between your knees, okay? okay. Now slowly slide them up your body. Stop. Too high. Too Look high. where the dog's nose is, right? There you go. That's where you need to stop. Do you see the dog actually scooted in right there on its own? Okay. He was closer. Yep, he was closer. Okay, let's walk And slide the slowly up and stop, stop. Good job. No, it's fine. So if the dog doesn't offer it, if, let's say the butt doesn't drop, just set the dog up, give the dog another opportunity. Okay. All right, good job. Free. Is that okay to free him? And then By all means, yep, yeah. reset the dog up again. Okay. Training's gonna be super easy with him. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yep. <laughs> okay. He's gonna really eat your That's awesome. He seems to be like, being disengaged, he's kind of like I'm done with this. Kind of done with this? Yeah, he does what he, I'm kind of getting the instinct to So one thing that might help, I, I'm glad you bought both treats. Uh -huh. Next week maybe start with hot dogs, and then after class, go back to cheese, like go to use cheese. Yeah. Then the dog's something, hey, this is something new. Yeah, and then I kind of have to try to go a little bit back and forth, but here, I'm holding it up there. The other thing you can do is, um, if you just can't get it standing up, like sit down, and you can actually do a sit from sitting oh, down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Almost, almost. He's just being lazy. <laughs> He's like, maybe I'm done with this. Yeah. Okay. When you guys are ready, let's go sit back down. Yes. Good call. Good call. Okay. 
Good job. So the question came up, why shouldn't we use okay instead of free or vice versa? Any idea? You got it. You must be a school teacher. Okay, so here's an analogy. Can I use her? So Jill, she's got me at the park. She asked me to sit. Sit. Okay, she answers her cell phone because her husband's calling and asks her to bring a pizza and she says, okay. Okay. All right, I get to go check out and run out this dog over here, right? Okay, if your dogs, if you train your dog correctly, the dog will pick up on that cue just like you ask the dog to sit her down. This is the reason why I don't like to use the word okay. In the end, this is your guys' project, your dogs. If you want to use any verbiage, you're welcome to. You're, you're, you know, you're more than welcome to. So I kind of skipped over this a little bit when the beginning of class. Your verbiage makes a huge difference. It's all about consistency. Dog training is, is about teaching your dog two plus two is always four. So imagine this. Imagine this family here comes to class and they teach the dog how to down correctly. Dad goes home and dad tells the dog to lay down and just kind of yells at the dog or pushes the dog down. It's equivalent of the dog hearing that two plus two equals eight or 12 or some other different number. If you want consistency with your dog, you have to be consistent, okay? The other thing is the verbiage. The verbiage we use, there you go. The verbiage we use makes a huge difference. So to you and I, if I say, Jill, can you come over here? Don't come over here, but she knows I called her, right? However, if I tell my dog, hey, get over here, my dog's not gonna know. He's gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? Why? Because his come marker is just come. He understands that come means my body does this, the muscle memory does this. If we are constantly changing the dog's muscle memory, or not the muscle memory, constantly change the dog's marker, the dog will never associate the correct muscle memory. Does that make sense? So to you and I, we can understand, go over here, or get over here, or, Damn it, dog, get over here. To the dog, it just needs to hear, come sit down. Now, if you wanna use a different language, that's perfectly fine. My dog is bilingual. Some days I yell at him in English, some days I yell at him in Spanish, and some days I yell at him in German. Okay, however, certain markers, certain words, sit, down, come, they're all in the same language. They're the same thing all the time. So he understands it. That way, if I tell my dog to come, and he says, up yours, dad, I want to do something else, and there is a consequence, the dog understands, oh, I got in trouble because I did not do X, not because dad didn't communicate with me right. Does that make sense? Okay, so. Sorry. Yes. Is it bad that there's two different people saying the same command? No, so uh, if you came to my house and, tell, and told my dog to down, most likely you'd say, okay, I'll down. Why? Because, you know, my dog likes to eat. Um, if you were a brand new stranger in my house and the dog never met you, probably the dog would say, I don't know who you are, why the heck are you telling me down? Some dogs would, to be honest with you. Some dogs are so just eager to please that they probably would offer the down. But if you say lay down and your husband says down, yeah, the dog's gonna get confused. So one of the things I usually encourage people to do is if you have a multiple people in your household, write down all your verbiage, put it on your refrigerator. That way everybody is on the same page. If your spouse, family member, or anybody else is not willing to do the same thing you're doing with your dog, you should tell them not to do anything with the dog at all. It's that drastic. Because you can't, if you send your dog mixed signals, this class is gonna be a waste of your time and a waste of your money, just to be honest with you. It's all about consistency, okay? So any questions on uh, what we covered? So tonight we're gonna go over what we covered again. We covered engagement. So engagement is a frame of mind, getting your dog to want to work with you, okay? It's much like if I walked up to you and I started handing you $100 bills, you're like, hey, I'll go paint your house, okay? Why, because now you're engaged. Then we worked on down, teach your dog the correct way to down, not butt first, we teach the dog elbows first, front body first. We don't put a marker word to it until the dog understands a muscle memory and can do the correct muscle memory at least 20, 30 times in a row. Once the dog can do it a couple times, a number of times in a row, then you can put a marker word to it. If you've, if you've already taught your dog uh, to down in an incorrect way. Let's say you've been forcing your dog to down, or let's say right now you tell your dog down and it kind of says, I don't want to do this because this was taught in a negative way. I'd probably encourage you to use a different marker word because let's see, let's say I go up to Jill 
and I say pickles, and for six months, every time I say pickles, I run over her toes. Now all of a sudden, I want to say pickles and make pickles something fun, right? She's going to be like, I know what pickles means. However, if I tell her tomatoes and give her $100 for six months, it's a, still a vegetable. She's going to be like, hey, I like that word, right? So, so it's okay to make the mistakes. You guys don't know. I don't expect you guys to know. However, if you've made some mistakes on some marker words and you've done it for a while, it may be okay to change a marker word and reteach a muscle memory. There's nothing really wrong with that, okay? Uh, then we talked about uh, the F word, freeing your dog, releasing your dog. So if you ask your dog to do anything, sit down, either you need to give them another marker word. Let's say you ask your dog to sit and then you want your dog to come. Your dog comes to you and you're all done training, you need to release your dog. Your dog needs to understand, now training's over. A good visual cue to have is almost taking like a verbal leash off your dog. It's like taking your dog off a leash and letting him go in your backyard, right? You're done training them, all done, okay? Then we worked on sitting, getting your dog to sit close to you, trying to get your dog to sit a little bit quicker. Um, at the end of the day, these are your guys' dogs. If you're happy with how the dog is downing, if you're happy with how the dog is sitting, and you're like, yeah, I'm just really happy with my, where my dog's at, that is perfectly fine. My job is to show you the best I can. Your job is to take what I show you and apply what applies to you. Some of this is not gonna apply to everybody in the class. It's just not. Some of you guys already have a good sit and down on your dog. However, like I told you on the phone, it doesn't hurt to relearn certain things, to learn certain things a different way, and to reteach them sometimes, okay? All right, so uh, one of the things I did not tell you is um, I record all your classes. So let's say, let's say you guys like, man, I, you know, I missed part of the class or I just didn't understand it. Usually I try to, it takes me about a couple days to get it on my Facebook page or my YouTube. So you can always go do a search for your class, go to my Facebook page, like it, and you can rewatch your video. That way you can go back and say, oh man, okay. Or if you have a family member, they can see exactly what you covered in class so you guys can be on the same page, okay? You guys have any questions before I catch you loose? Our homework. Your homework. Oh, that's a really good question. Your homework is exactly what we worked on. So if you want a well-trained dog, this week, work on more engagement than anything else. Sit and down are super easy. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Create that relationship. And then while you well, you got a good relationship, then throw a couple sit and downs in there. And also remember the F word. We have multiple dogs in our house. Same thing in play. Okay. However, if you have multiple dogs in your house, I'd really encourage you to make sure the dogs are separated when you work with them. Working with two dogs at the same time just suck. I mean, because they just, they kind of feed off each other and, and they'll start freeing each other. Let's say you ask one dog to down, they both down, but then one dog just jumps up. The other dog's gonna say, oh, you must want me to be done too. So the best thing I can tell you is separate them and um, that'll get you better results. Okay? All right, so when you guys leave, please kind of leave one at a time. I don't want everybody kind of rushing out the door. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm so glad you guys are here and I will see you guys next week, okay? All right, if you guys have any questions, stay in your seat and I'll come around and answer your questions and help you.